In this video, we'll learn all the latest features in SketchUp 2024. All right, so the first update, which I would like to show you guys is if I make any new rectangles or lines, you can notice that we have an asterisk symbol right on top next to the name, which means that this file is not saved. So once you save this file, the asterisk symbol goes away. So that's a good way to know that this file has not been saved yet. So that's the first tiny update that SketchUp has to offer. Now the major update is of course the performance. So let's go to Windows Preferences. And if you go to graphics here, so you can see we have two new options. You can use the new graphics engine, or you can use the classical graphics engine that SketchUp uses in the previous versions as well. Now I have an RTX 3070 graphic card, which works really well. So I'm going to stick with the new version of the new graphics engine and see how it affects my workflow. So you can see this is my graphic engine details as well. Now, if you have a good graphic card that you want to work with, it's a good idea to select that from the GPU selection here. So I'm going to click on OK. So we'll need to restart SketchUp for those changes to take place. So let me do that quickly. All right, so I'm going to test out the new version with a previous project of ours. So I'm going to open this office model here. All right, so right off the bat, I can notice the performance improvement. I can easily orbit in this heavy model. Whereas if I try to open this model in SketchUp 2023, and when I try to orbit, I can sort of see a lag when I orbit in this model in the previous version. So there's definitely been a great performance improvement in SketchUp. I still need to check with larger models, but for a medium sized model, about 50 MB, it works pretty good. Probably it works for higher, larger project sizes as well. But I definitely see a larger performance improvement. I also noticed that it's much more nimble and I feel that I can easily sort of zoom in wherever I like, zoom out, orbit faster and more. Whereas in 2023, when I orbit and sort of scroll in and more, I definitely feel a lag in the model. So yeah, kudos to SketchUp team for increasing the performance in SketchUp 2024. Now in the graphic settings, we also have different multi-sample anti-aliasing. Now, if you increase this value, it would improve the quality, but it can result in slower performance. So definitely stick to the default option, which is now set at 4X. Now let's look at the new ambient occlusion style that SketchUp has to offer. Now this is a very simple project and let's try to improve the view of this model just by using the ambient occlusion effect. So let's go to styles here and you will find the ambient occlusion folder under styles. So let's open ambient occlusion and we have different styles under ambient occlusion. So we have dark pen. So you can see it sort of adds that depth in your model. So this is the default exterior look with the ambient occlusion on and you can notice the depth of the edges and more with the ambient occlusion effect. Basically it adds that dark halo effect on your edges and more to add sort of some depth in your model. Now you can combine this with the other styles and you can create very creative styles in SketchUp and also it will help you create more cool presentations and drawings with the ambient occlusion style. Now if you go to edit and you go to the face settings, you can notice the ambient occlusion setting here. We can switch this off or on and it switches on the ambient occlusion. We can also increase the distance that you want this effect to have on your model and the intensity of the ambient occlusion as well, which is sort of like the opacity. So we can keep it at the default and it will give you a very decent result. All right, so another new feature that SketchUp has introduced is Trimble Connect, which comes pre-installed. So you don't have to go to your extension warehouse to install this. So if you want to share this model, let's go to File, Trimble Connect, and let's click on Share a Link. So you'll need to save this model first. And you can save it wherever you like. Now, before you save, you'll need to save it under a project. So these are the various projects that I have on my server in Trimble Connect. You can create a new project as well. So let's call this Swedish Villa. Set the server location and click on Create Project. And then you'll need to enter that project folder and save it here. So once uh, you click on save, you can notice that it is getting uploaded and it has been successfully uploaded. So now you can share a link. So you can click on this toggle option here to share a link and click on copy. 
and then if you open that on your Chrome browser or any browser that you use, we can view our model online. So you can share this link with your clients and more. And as you work on SketchUp and save and publish this model in Triple Connect. So for example, if I go back to my SketchUp model and probably just move this here, go to File, Triple Connect, and save to Triple Connect. I'm going to save this as, click on Yes. Just give it a bit to update. It should update here first. You can see the file status, cloud update in progress. So let's wait for it to update. So it's done. Now, if you go back to the Chrome browser, it will update here as well. So you just need to simply refresh or wait for the model update. And boom, you can see that the furniture updates in real time. So that's the benefit of using Trimble Connect, which now comes pre-installed into SketchUp 2024. Now, another useful feature in SketchUp 2024 is that it is versionless for the past two years, which means that if you save this model, Okay, so I'm going to save this model and then I'm going to try to open this model in 2023. So you can notice now we can open this model. It does open up with a file version warning, but it lets you make changes in 2023 as well. Now in the previous versions, if you had saved 2023 file as 2023, then you couldn't open it in 2022. But you can open 2024 version files in version 23 and version 22 but you cannot open in the previous versions before 2021. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Another useful feature is the add location feature in 2024. All right, so let's go to file, click on add location, and then we can sort of select a location by dropping the spin wherever your site is located. Or you can search for the coordinates here or for the name as well. You can also show your model in the site. So if you toggle this off or on, you can see your model here. So let's go ahead with this location here and click on continue. And then we can use this window box to drag in a larger region. So let's import a smaller region for now. We'll come back to these settings. So let's click on import site context. And once it's imported, you can actually close the add location or you can also import more. We'll come back to import more. Let's see how our location looks. So let's click on close add location. So right now we cannot see our site because we are on a monochrome mode. So let's go with a texture mode here. Yeah, perfect. So now we can see our site as well. It also comes in with um, tags here. So now they've organized the tags better. So we, so we have a 3D terrain with the slope as well. So you can switch that on or off. And it also comes in with a 2D plane. So they've organized the tags, which is nice. If you want to add more context, you can just go to file, add location. So now you can see we've imported the existing site. So if you want to add more context, click on import context. And then you can simply drag this box and make it larger to import a larger context. Now these settings here, so you can import without a 3D mesh, which is not recommended. Generally, most models will require a 3D mesh, which will also bring in the slope of the site. You can also, of course, see where your model is located. And you can also import a street map if you like, or in most cases, you will be importing the satellite imagery. Now, resolution is generally set to high, and they have two image providers that you can use, either Bing or Digital Globe. But if you've already imported a site, I would highly recommend that you stick with the default settings that you've used before. So now let's click on Import Site Context. And click on Close Ad Location. All right, so now you can see more of the site has been imported and our model sits in perfectly as well. All right, so another useful feature that they've added is if you activate the Move tool, generally this rotation grips show up. Now you can hide these rotation grips by going to your Windows Preferences. And if you go to Drawing, you have this Show Move Tool Rotation Grips. So if you switch that off and click on OK, then the rotation grips don't show up. This was available in SketchUp for Web, and now we have it in SketchUp Pro as well. There's a lot more few features that they've added. For example, they've improved the IFC import and export. So if you're using SketchUp for your BIM workflows, then you can start using IFC 4. You can also import IFC 4 files more easily. The geometry comes out better as well. So we'll look at this at a later stage. We also have USDZ and GITF interoperability. Now I've never worked with these files, so I do not have the expertise to expand on this, but from what I've read, it helps you use these files in technologies developed by Pixar and more for complex 3D scenes and animations. Another useful feature is in the SketchUp Studio versions. Now, if you're working with point cloud files, 
they've added a new ground mesh tool, which can easily turn your 3D point cloud scans into quad face terrain meshes that you can edit and manipulate in SketchUp. Now, I generally see a lot more companies using SketchUp than probably Revit or the other softwares to build their point cloud files because SketchUp has a lot more tools to offer and is much more user friendly and also gives you more options to create more complex geometry when compared to Revit. Now, another feature that they've added is the extension error dialog box. Now, sometimes some plugins will make the software a bit slow. And if you have those plugins, then this error box will show up. And if you want to fix those extensions, you can simply disable them or you can update those extensions as well. When you update to SketchUp 2024, and if you install all the previous extensions, this error dialog box will open up more often because SketchUp just released its version, its new version, and the developers who created all these plugins need to update their plugins for the latest SketchUp version. So it should be fixed in few days time and most plugins should work fine. But for the older ones, and which are not being updated by the developers, those would not work with the latest version. All right, so another cool feature that I want to show you guys is in the previous versions, when you wanted to sort of rotate an object and make it sit right on the face, it was rather difficult, but in 2024, so if you want this block edge to touch the face of this wall or this group, then you can select all of this, use the rotate tool. I'm gonna to snap it to the red axis and select the end point. And now when you sort of hover on the face, you can see that it snaps to the radius on face and group. So now you can easily touch the face of that group or wall using ladder inferencing. All right, so we've covered most of the main features in SketchUp. Now let's open layout for SketchUp and check out what's new in layout for SketchUp. All right, so it has a new welcome screen, which is nice. The UI is pretty much the same as the previous versions. So let's actually open one of our project and let's see how it works in both the new versions and the previous versions. All right, so in layout for SketchUp, we have some performance improvements. So let's go to edit, click on preferences. And you can notice we have something called the draft mode. So if you switch this on, now when you try to sort of zoom in or pan in layout for SketchUp, you can notice the hatches goes away, which means that you can move faster and work faster in layout for SketchUp. So that's a very cool update that SketchUp has to offer. You can also keep this always on and this way you can create dimensions faster and do a whole lot of things faster in layout. In most scenarios, pan and zoom only works fine as well. Now, if you disable Ske SketchUp viewport drawing and zoom in and zoom out, then the SketchUp viewport also hides away, which is not what we require, so we can keep that off. Now, pan and zoom redraw delay means that if you keep this, let's say to about three seconds, and then sort of zoom in or zoom out and pan, it'll take about three seconds for the hatches and the remaining parts of the layout file to show up. So this also sort of improves the speed in layout for SketchUp. In most cases, you can just leave it at the default if you're using a decent system. We also have enable experimental graphics engine. Now this means that it is still under development, so it may not work properly on your system. But if you're using a decent laptop or a PC with a good graphics engine, you can keep this on and see how it affects your workflow. It'll generally make your workflow faster because it's gonna use the new graphics engine which was shown earlier in the SketchUp 2024 software. So I will keep it on and see how it's gonna affect my workflow. You can see that when I switch this on, when I'm sort of zoomed out, the hatches and more get sort of grayed out. So there are some tweaks in its algorithm to make the layout for SketchUp software faster. They have also introduced some inferencing techniques in layout for SketchUp, which is similar to SketchUp. So if you activate the line tool here, click once, and if you tap the right arrow key, you can see that you can now snap it on particular axis lines. So for the green line, it's the top arrow key. And let's say, for example, if you draw a line tangent, and if you want to snap to this line, then you can click on the line tool. And then when you, and when you sort of hover on these lines and tap the down arrow key, then you are inferencing to that line angle. You can also export ranges of PDFs now. So if you go to File, Export, and click on PDF, Click on save. Now if you select range, let's say you want one, two, three, comma, one, two, five, two, six. And then if you click on export, 
then it will export a range of PDFs. So that's a pretty cool feature in Layout for SketchUp. In the previous versions, you only had all or from, so adding a range is a pretty useful feature in the latest version. All right, so we've covered most of the updates that SketchUp and Layout for SketchUp 2024.0 has to offer. You can check out the release notes for more features that SketchUp has offered as shipped with this latest version and also the various bugs and more that they fixed as well. SketchUp still looks pretty much the same compared to previous versions, all the same native tools, except the fact that they've changed the UI a bit. But overall, I'm happy with this new update in SketchUp 2024. It, it has made the performance of the software faster and hopefully the number of bug splat crashes would reduce from year on out. And since they've kept it very minimal, like how they've always done, it gives the developers more freedom to create more awesome plugins and tools in SketchUp. I'm also in the process of learning Ruby to develop plugins for SketchUp. So overall, I'm happy with the update and I look forward to creating some cool new projects, plugins and a whole lot more in SketchUp 2024. By the way, you can upgrade to 2024 if you already have a license for SketchUp 2023 or the previous versions because it is based on a subscription license. So you always have access to the latest updates and more that SketchUp has to offer. I hope you like this video. Please do like and subscribe and please do share this video with your colleagues or friends who would like to know all the latest features and more in SketchUp 2024. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.